All right, everybody. So the other day I made a video kind of explaining core aeration, overseeding, what it is, why we do it. And I talked a little bit about the machine I use. So uh, today I'm going to dive a little deeper into the machine for the people who have questions uh, and answer some questions that I get asked uh, out in town, out in public, uh, quite often about the machine when people see me with it. So I use a Lesco Pro Air 30. This is the same machine, essentially, as a Stinger Quad Air 3000. The only difference is being uh, my machine is green instead of yellow, and my machine has a Briggs & Stratton Vanguard engine instead of the Kawasaki 22 horsepower, I believe is what comes on the Stinger. Um, a lot of people are unsure of the Vanguard engine. They lean towards the Stinger because of that because uh, they want the Kawasaki. It's no secret to people who know me that I am not the biggest Kawasaki fan. I own them, I run them, they're okay, uh, not at the top of my list, so it was no issue at all for me to go with the green version and get the Lesco with the Vanguard engine. I have Vanguard engines on some mowers in the past. They have gone well into uh, you know, 12, 1500 hours, close to 2000 hours with no major problems, no service other than air fil filters and oil changes. Uh, so this did not scare me off one little bit. Uh, this machine is very young still. It's got 45 hours. Uh, so I can't really speak to longevity uh, of the machine and reliability past 45 hours. But in my first 45 hours, this has been a good machine and it has given me no problems uh, so far. Uh, this machine is all hydraulically driven, whereas the Toros, XMR, Try, and some of the other ones are still chain driven. Uh, from what I understand, this is the first machine on the market to be all hydraulically driven, so no adjustments, no uh, things to break, less wear items. And I say no things to break, no chains to break, uh, less wear items on this machine. All right, so let's move around this machine and talk about a few uh, key components and uh, things that I like about this machine. So here are the uh, hydraulic pumps for the machine. They are fan cooled like you would find on most lawnmowers. I don't know if the earlier models have this, but I know that uh, they do now. This hydraulic pump over here also has a oil cooler on it that is cooled by that hydraulic pump. So the fan is cooling the pump, but it's also uh, helping to pull air through this uh, oil cooler here. Uh, this is the engine oil cooler. This would be your hydraulic oil cooler on top of that hydraulic uh, pump right there. Uh, the one thing uh, about getting the Vanguard engine instead of the Kawasaki engine, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is rated at 23 horsepower. The Kawasaki is rated at 22. Uh, from the people I've talked to and my experience, you're going to notice zero power difference between those two ratings. The Vanguard engine, the downfall of it is, is changing the oil. Uh, from what I understand, the Kawasaki's come with a hose attached to the drain plug, uh, kind of like how a lot of Kohler's do, and it makes a little bit of a mess-free oil change for you. The Vanguard does not. You have to remove the plug from the bottom of the engine, and the oil will drain out on the decking surface of the aerator. Uh, I've done one oil change in this as a break-in. Uh, what people suggest doing is you can actually order the hose and thread it into the engine block. I did not do that. I wished I would have at the time, but I was trying to get it ready for last season. Uh, and I just went ahead and did it and cleaned up the mess. Uh, the one downfall with the Vanguard engine, in my opinion, is that right there. But it can be remedied by just threading in the hose the first time you change the oil. All right, so moving around to this side of the machine, uh, you can get a better uh, look at this hydraulic oil cooler that's on top of this pump. This is where all the wiring runs. Uh, for those that want a seed box, uh, Stinger makes a drop seeder that fits right here. It drops the seed uh, right in front of the tines. Everybody says the seed box works great. It's expensive. Uh, I think it's a little over $2,000 right now. If you're doing a lot of aerating seeding and you're doing larger properties, I would say pull the trigger on that. It's probably worth your investment. For me right now, where I'm at in my business, I use a Lesco 80 pound push spreader. That's fine, uh, it does everything I need it to do. I have no complaints with that spreader. It's never given me any issues so far. All right, so moving around to the back of the machine, uh, you can see the control panel here. 
Uh, we've got your choke for starting the engine because it is carbureted, not fuel injected. I look for that probably to come in the future since a lot of brands are moving that way with their engines. Uh, we've got the throttle here, hour meter uh, right here, key, and your rocker switch. Uh, this lets you decide if you want the times up, the times down, the middle is the neutral position. So what's cool about this machine is when you put the switch in times up, you can then press the foot pedal to lower the times and uh, lift your pedal to raise the tines. Here's the foot pedal here. Works very well. Uh, if you choose to put the tines in tines down position, uh, what that allows you to do is it will lower the tines. Uh, you push the foot pedal to raise the tines. People have different preferences. I love that Stinger and uh, Let's Go uh, put that option in there so you can choose which one you like. I experimented with both when I started using right on aerators and I'll be honest, uh, what I've stuck with is I prefer to put the rocker switch in the tines up position and then use the pedal to lower the tines. Uh, for me, if you have the tines down and you're just riding the platform, when you go to make a sharp turn or a zero turn, uh, sometimes I find it's hard to find the pedal uh, without looking for it. And so for me, it's a lot quicker to ride it if I just have my foot on the pedal and all I gotta do is pivot up on my heel, take my toes off the switch, raise the tines, and then I'm right back on it. Uh, with these machines, you cannot zero turn with the times down. You can do sweeping turns. You can go around tree rings, things like that, sidewalks uh, that have a sweeping turn in it. But you don't want to do anything too sharp because you risk tearing up the turf more than you should and you risk breaking the times. So moving back to this side of the control panel, uh, you've got your pressure switch here. I mentioned in my last video that we aerate uh, preferably around 250 to 350 PSI around here. That lets us know that the soil's got some moisture and that it's probably good conditions to do aeration. Uh, the machine does go up to around 1,000 PSI. You can use the uh, tines as a jack for the machine to raise the rear wheels off the ground. But if you're aerating, you know, really above that 450, 500 PSI range, the soil's probably pretty tough and you may need to consider waiting until there's a little moisture in the ground or asking your customers to water the yard and come back and hit it again so you can do a quality job, not risk tearing up your machine. Uh, here is the pressure adjustment switch. It's really easy. There is a locking nut on the bottom. You loosen that. You can then adjust your pressure, tighten the nut back up. That way you don't get out of adjustment while you're riding the yard. Uh, handbrake is here. It's just like a walk behind mower. It doesn't work great. It works okay. If the tire pressure's up, it doesn't work great. Don't rely on it. Make sure you strap this machine. Down. All right, so I know it's going to be hard to hear because I have the machine running in order to have the tines up. But as you can see, when you crank up that pressure on that uh, time and you run it up to like 800-900 PSI, especially when you're on a concrete floor, the tines do add, act like a jack for the machine and they will raise the rear tires off the floor. Uh, that just shows you how much down pressure they can put. Uh, I don't recommend aerating at uh, this much pressure because it does get dangerous if your tires leave the ground because that is still a big source of your traction uh, and you're definitely going to start breaking tines if you do something like this while you're actually aerating. Alright, so now coming down to the bottom of the machine. This is the ride on platform, here's your foot switch. The platform is not overly comfortable, it's not uncomfortable. It's never bothered me to ride this for a couple hours, 3-4 hours in a day. Um, I usually do area and seating by myself, so I'm on the machine, off the machine to push the seater, on the machine, off the machine. I'm not just riding it all day. Uh, I would equate it to the comfort level of most stand-on mowers. Uh, I know the Ferris and some of the other ones have a little nicer features uh, with their platforms to make them more comfortable. I've spent a lot of time on a Hustler Super S. In my opinion, this is about equally as comfortable as riding a Hustler Super S. Uh, it does have rubber bushings to give you a little suspension, uh, not much. Like I said, not great, not awful. The platform does fold up by releasing the switch on the side. Makes the machine more compact, lets you fit it on the trailer easier. Uh, it takes up less room in your shop. Because let's be honest, uh, for most guys, these machines are just sitting around in your shop for about 44, 45 weeks of the year. Uh, so you really want them to stay compact, not take up a lot of room in the off season. All right, so here's the machine with this rear access panel removed. It is two wing nuts that you can take off by hand when you're in the field. It gives you good access to all these tines. If they break or you need to replace them, 
I'm 45 hours in on my machine. Uh, I've not broken one yet. Uh, they do need to be replaced periodically just for good maintenance to keep the spoon sharp and give you consistent results. So the thing about the Stinger is, uh, the tires are driven hydraulically with wind motors, just like a lawnmower, of course. Uh, but also, the outside set of tines on each side are also hydraulically driven. So, you've got your tires that are moving the machine, but also these tines are moving at the same rate as the tires. That's why these machines outperform a lot of other machines when it comes to riding on hills. The tines are giving you traction, they're helping you dig, they're helping you push when you need them. The inner two sets of tines are free spinning, so they're not tied to a hydraulic motor. They can move up with each other. I like the design. I think it works well. A lot of people have complained, said they've had um, bearing failures, I believe, on the time drum. Uh, knock on wood, I'm only 45 hours in. I've had no issues like that so far. Uh, it's been a good machine as far as that goes. All right, so I will point out one more thing before we move on. Uh, just to show you all, this is the hydraulic oil filter right here. Uh, you can pick these up at most local lawnmower dealers because it's just a hydro gear hydraulic system and most uh, commercial mowers either use hydro gear systems or Parker systems so most of them will have this filter or can get it for you pretty quickly uh, at your local mower shop. Here's the hydraulic oil tank and here is the battery. This pad comes off with four screws. Uh, makes access uh, pretty easy to work on this. So I do want to make quick note of this real quick. Um, on the left side of the machine, when you're standing on the machine, it's the side with the parking brake handle here. If you look through here, right behind the fuel tank, you'll see the sight glass. That is the sight glass for the hydraulic oil system to make sure that your hydraulic oil is at the appropriate level. Uh, it's good just to spot check that every day uh, to make sure you don't need to top it off. It'll also let you know that you might have a leak that you haven't noticed so yet. last thing, as I pointed out in a previous video, and as I said earlier, I still use a push spreader. Uh, instead of getting the seed box for the machine, uh, my machine did not have a seed box on it when I bought it. Uh, the price has gone up since I bought my machine, so I don't plan on investing in the seed box right now. I'm not saying I want the future, I'm just saying right now. Uh, I use this Lesco 80 pound push spreader. I did buy this new. Uh, it does have the edge guard here uh, and it has a third hole shut off, which is nice. The tires are pneumatic, uh, the bearings and the axle are greasable. It has a rain cover with it. I like it, it's stainless steel, it's not gonna wear out. It's gonna last me a really long time at my business. I will also say this for guys who are starting out, this is something that I learned pretty quickly when I first started area and overseeding. Um, these are rated at poundage as far as the size of the hopper. This is an 80 pound spreader. I think you can get, it might be a 50 pound Let's Go Push Spreader at some of the big box stores. I know I've seen them at Lowe's. Um, the difference is some of those may not have a stainless steel frame uh, like this one has. Some of those might be powder coated. Uh, also, to keep in mind, when it's giving you a poundage rating on the hopper, that is usually for fertilizer, not for grass seed. So my spreader here being an 80 pound rated spreader will not quite hold a 50 pound bag of grass seed. So don't be surprised when you buy your spreader and cannot fit a 50 pound bag of grass seed in it when it says it's rated for 80 pounds. That is usually talking about fertilizer. So keep that in mind when you're looking for a spreader and you see one you think, oh, 50 pounds, that's one whole bag, that's a good deal. Uh, chances are it's not gonna hold a whole bag. So the last takeaway I want y'all to get from my video is my personal thoughts and opinions on buying versus renting the equipment. Uh, for me and my business, what makes most sense for the way I try to model it is I want to purchase the equipment and I want to purchase it and own it as fast as I can. If I think there's a chance I'm going to be using it long term or I think it's going to be a big revenue generator for me. Uh, it's the same way I felt when I got my Toro Dingo. It's the same way I feel when I buy a mower. It is the same way I felt when I bought this aerator. So a lot of guys will argue that renting uh, might be the best way to go for them. Uh, they might argue that it's the best way to go for everybody. The problem, in my opinion, with renting this equipment is, uh, at least in Middle Tennessee, the aerating and overseeding season is pretty short to hit it in the optimum uh, weather bracket there. Uh, and for my customers, I want to do their yards when the weather is the best it can be for getting this seed to germinate and take. Uh, the problem with the renting is, 
You have to reserve the equipment. You have to hope you can get the equipment. You have to hope that they have maintenance the equipment and replaced the spoons and tines uh, as they should have, that they're tight, and that the equipment's gonna run. Uh, you have to then factor in your time to go into the rental yard to get the equipment, uh, get it on site, and then also take the equipment back at the end of the day. Uh, for me, I like to own the equipment. It helps uh, to get it the soonest you can, but that way it starts paying itself back faster in your business. Also, I maintenance everything myself. I do as much of the work on my machines myself as I'm capable of doing. So I like to know that the machine has been serviced, the oil's fresh, and there's a less chance that the machine's gonna go down on me when I leave the shop with it in the morning. Uh, I'm not saying the Rona Yards don't do a good job of that. I'm just saying that uh, they have a lot of equipment. Sometimes something can kind of slip through the cracks and you might uh, be on the receiving end of that. Um, and that's just going to throw a wrench in your day, slow you down, and therefore decrease uh, your revenue income while you're trying to sort that out. So my personal takeaway is, uh, yes, the equipment is expensive, but this machine has 45 hours on it. It has paid itself back. Uh, that's pretty rare with equipment that it can pay itself back in 45 hours. So I say just get the machine, you can skip the seed box uh, to start out with if you want like I did, get you a nice push spreader. Uh, I got this one from MK Rittenhouse, they had the best price, it came straight to my house uh, with free shipping. It's been a good spreader, this has been a good machine. Uh, at this point right now, I recommend getting it and just getting out there and going for it, get your prices set, get your prices right, do good work, put down the right amount of seed, which is really important, and you're gonna get repeat business and you're gonna get word of mouth and you're gonna start getting customers calling you wanting you to come do AOS at their property.